Uh, all right, guys. It is a gorgeous moonlit night here in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, here on this Monday night, May 8th, 2017, somewhere around there. So anyway, I am thrilled to announce this is my last night in the hellhole of South Austin, Texas before the summer heat kicks. The job from hell is over. I'm back to East Bumblefuck tomorrow. So me and the little dog are going to bring you our final rant from uh, South Austin, Texas before we head back to East Bumblefuck. And this is, it's still Monday, so I'm not quite, so after 11 p.m., but it's still Monday. So never too late for my my uh, economic meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how the global industrial economy otherwise known as the new world order is pulling out all the stops to bring down a planet where all I've been out bringing down a planet being a slave to the new world order and we're going to start right here in the good old state of Texas, and I must say there's been a first. This is the first time that Coast to Coast AM, Coast to Coast AM, has ever appeared on an economic meltdown roundup rant. All right. And, uh, sorry, little dog, you need to move over as we see nearly 400 migratory birds die from striking Texas skyscraper. There you go. Good old state of Texas. Nearly 400 migratory birds of brilliant plumage were killed when they smashed into an office tower in Texas while flying in a storm in downtown Galveston. Yep. Anyway, so we got 400 dead birds piling up. From Texas to the whole planet now, I actually mentioned this. I closed my climate change meltdown roundup rant with this story, but it bears repeating as what was going to be the lead-off story about these countries are decimating the environment. Take a wild guess. Take a wild guess. The numbers one, two, and three of the biggest planet eaters on planet Earth. Number one, China ranked as the number one biggest planet eater on the planet with the greatest ecological footprint out of all other countries. The United States came in second, and India ranked third. What else we got? Uh, let's see, Russia four, Japan five, Brazil six, Germany seven, Indonesia eight, France nine, and the UK ten. Unsurprisingly, the countries that demand most from the environment are those that are home to the greatest number of, come on, people. Okay, let's see, from that no shit Sherlock story, let's go. Now this one's a video, so I can't really share it to you. I just like this is, this is the entire, I think it says it all. You don't actually have to watch the video on CNBC. A Wall Street bear warns bad things are about to happen and a recession is on the way. Okay. I don't have, I got a lot of stories and a little bit of time. We're just going to wear out the batteries on the no shit Sherlock. Uh, button here. U.S. oil production is tipped to hit 
record levels. And that will add to OPEX quandary. This is from Forbes magazine. Forbes magazine is going to explain this to you. Another week, another uptick in the number of U.S. oil rigs and production projections. Something that's become a familiar theme for much of 2017. Hmm. Yes. Oh, God. So, what is the rig count? Uh, all it says is just factoring it all out. The, uh, the rig count, which at first registered week-on-week -week rises of four to five rigs, has rapidly risen to seven to ten rigs every week coming on line. Do you think so? Yes. Anyway, I think we've been through that story about a hundred thousand times. We're going to change buttons now. U.S. oil and gas to contribute 1.9 trillion dollars to U.S. GDP by 2035. This is when I get to hit both buttons at the same time. Since U.S. oil production started recovering at the end of 2016, coinciding with a pro-oil administration entering the White House, do you think so? A pro-oil administration, industry bodies, I love that, industry bodies, I guess floating in some oil-soaked sea, and analysts have been projecting that the U.S. shale patch output will continue to rise. And earlier this week, the American Petroleum Institute released a study it had commissioned which claims that not only will this oil shell production grow, but investment in oil and gas infrastructure will contribute up to 1.9 trillion dollars to US GDP by 2035. Oh, I'm seeing what they're, oh, I thought they meant in one year. I was thinking, uh, okay, no, I guess, uh, what, what does that headline sound like to you? It sounds to me like they're saying in the year 2035 that the oil will be contributing 1.9 trillion. No, what they're saying is between now and then it will add up uh, as it approaches $100 billion per year by 2035. That is, of course, uh, assuming there is a planet here in 2035. The study also sees rapid oil infrastructure development likely to continue for a prolonged period. Yep, 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 this is how uh, the, uh, well, I just about said this is how the United States is, is honoring its commitment to the Paris climate deal. Yes, uh, this is how we are keeping fossil fuels in the ground by uh, electing Donald Drill Baby Drill Trump, putting the head of Exxon as the Secretary of State and Rick Perry as the uh, head honcho at the Department of Energy. What's going on with this Dakota Access pipeline protest movement now focuses on the money. Yes, yeah, since they lost the battle over the oil. With construction done, oil has begun flowing from North Dakota to 
Illinois. But the opposition has not faded away. Okay. Moving on. As long as we're talking about pipelines, I guess you heard about that gas pipeline that was supposed to be a, just an empty, inactive pipeline, according to all the records that blew up uh, that house. So you should see this picture of this house in Colorado. Uh, did people, uh, let's see, how many people died in that? Uh, killed two people. Uh, so now, of course, they're, they're looking who to blame. <clears throat> and here's what they've come up with. The AP has come up with state records show Colorado has a total of three people. Three people assigned to check on the safety of pipelines running from about 54,000. 54,000 active oil and gas wells in Colorado alone. This is f the frackers is what we're talking about. Uh, yes. Uh, the April 17th explosion killed two people. Uh, investigators have said that gas was leaking into the home from a pipeline that was thought to be out of service. Yes, the pipeline is one of thousands in, the one, in this one state installed to carry oil and gas from wells to storage tanks or other collection points. And whatever's true for Colorado, good Lord, when you start looking at Oklahoma, Texas, North Dakota, Okay, I guess last week when we were talking about all these these oil company profits, I guess Shell hadn't come in yet. We we didn't get around to Shell. So a dollar short, no not a dollar, a day late, but not a dollar short. Shell quarterly profits surge. Net profit at Royal Dutch Shell increased more than sevenfold in the first quarter of 2017, the energy giant said on Thursday. After tax, after tax profit came in at three and a half billion dollars. This is more than one billion dollars per month compared to $484 million in the first quarter of 2016. So Shell joining every other oil company, just completely beating all sorts of, all this crap that there's some myth about these low oil prices. You know, all of these goddamn peak oil uh, they, you know, talking about how these oil companies were not going to like be able to survive if goddamn oil got down below what what is Richard Heinberg and and, and, and all of that the cast of characters that you know my heroes, you know, talking this unadulterated horseshit uh, that uh, that oil below eighty dollars a barrel was going to put these motherfuckers out of business at it, it, it around fifty to fifty five dollars a barrel the, the one oil company is making over one billion dollars per month at fifty five bucks a barrel you know, Richard Heinberg, you're one of my heroes, brother, but, but you got to check your facts. You're losing some goddamn credibility, man. I, I hate to say it. You're, you're sounding, you know, you're making a little bit of a fool out of yourself, any clueless fucking moron, thinking that these oil companies uh, are, are going to let $55 a barrel uh, put them in the poorhouse. Pull your head out of your ass clueless fucking peak oil morons. Anyway, don't want to start a fight. 
I mean, I don't, I don't want my people to get sulky on me. Anyway, what is going on over there in Cambodia? How is Cambodia keeping their pledge to the Paris Climate Talks? Cambodia held a grand, a groundbreaking ceremony Thursday for its first ever oil refinery, a six hundred twenty million dollar project. Let's take a wild guess who is building a six hundred and twenty million dollar first ever oil refinery in Cambodia. How about the China National Petroleum Company, which will be able to process two million tons of crude oil per year when it comes online in 2019 and a second phase set for completion in 2022 will increase capacity to five million tons. Five million tons of crude oil heading to China. Anyway, as long as we're over there, let's see. I, I've mentioned this one, but I guess it's now we got a dollar figure. Indonesia sues Thailand's oil company for two billion dollars over oil spill. The Indonesian government is suing Thailand's state-owned oil company for around two billion dollars for damage to the environment from the oil from an oil spill in the Timor Sea eight years ago. Are you done coughing, little dog? My little dog has one of these uh, collapsed tracheas, and I never know uh, when I have to do the Heimlich on him. I guess he recovered. Okay, let's see. Uh, what is okay? I don't know. Uh, I I should have. I guess I I had this one out of line, but anyway, it'll work. And this one I, I I'm a, I'm a little bit confused on. Um, uh, this is you know I've had rants about everyone from Exxon to Peabody Coal and all of these goddamn fossil fuel corporations uh, advising Donald Trump to stay in the, uh, the Paris climate deal for the simple reason that it was the fossil fuel corporations that wrote the Paris climate deal. That the Paris climate deal, all it does is give the fossil fuel corporations, uh, you know, license to go on with business as usual. There's not a goddamn thing in the Paris Climate Accord that has anything to do with slowing down fossil fuels. So I guess this one is just, you know, confuse them till they die. Uh, this is the Western Energy Alliance, a trade group representing the business interests of the exploration and production sector in several western states uh, has advised President Donald Trump to pull out, to pull out of the multilateral climate agreement for the sake of oil and gas industries. Uh, Anyway, guys, uh, I don't know. Uh, take the pick. Uh, I don't know. I'm sticking. I'm that. My story is that uh, I listen to Exxon and Peabody Coal on this one. Okay. Uh, I mentioned this one at some point last week. Again, bears repeating. For any clueless more on not understanding this, Oklahoma's largest ever earthquake was caused by humans, humans drilling for oil and gas.
gas. Oh, shit. So I guess the final verdict is in on the 5.8 Pawnee earthquake that shook Oklahoma last year was caused by human activity. A seismological study has found that earthquake was the largest human-induced earthquake in the state, but it was far from the only one. I, uh, I mean, as long as we're talking about big oil, we, we, we have to say something about big sports cars. I, I love the lead to this story. One powerful car engine just drove a lot of money to Ferrari. Stock prices are up. Gas prices are tame. So why not buy an expensive Ferrari with the biggest possible engine? There you go. At least that's what well-heeled Ferrari shoppers did in the first quarter of this year as supercar maker said Thursday that sales of its V12 models surged 50% from the prior year. Yes, while it seemingly wimpy it's seemingly wimpy V8 engines fell 3%. Those wimpy V8s. Everyone wants that V12. Okay, let's a couple of stories. Enough about oil. Do we have any about gas? Oh, I guess that thing uh, over there in Colorado, that was a gas explosion blowing up houses and killing people in Colorado. Let's go over, how do you pronounce this? Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan could emerge as a natural gas powerhouse. Yes. Anyway. D D D. Okay, let's go looking at uh, at mining and coal miners and and all of that stuff. What are the literal planet eaters those miners up to? Uh, let's see, where do we want to start? How about over there in the Philippines? Philippine environment chief dumped as miners triumph. A Philippines environment chief is funny enough. Philippine environment secretary Regina Lopez was sacked on Wednesday when lawmakers rejected her appointment in a big victory for the mining industry which she had accused of corruption and abuse. There you go. So I, I was just reading uh, in, in my Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant from Manga Bay, you know, just a few days ago, a few nights ago, grabbing the bullshit button where, uh, you know, talking about the Philippines uh, cracking down on all of these miners. And, and I was saying, you know, who, who the fuck are you kidding people pull your head out of your ass and uh, while Manga Bay I guess is like the day Manga Bay came out with his good news story about how the Philippines was going up against these goddamn planet eating sacks of shit uh, the one who was getting set the sack of shit was the environment minister actually doing her goddamn job uh, this is a quote from an angry Lopez uh, after the ruling. Uh, quote, if you want to be 
confirmed don't go against big business. It's wrong when lawmakers don't stand up for the rights of every Filipino, but rather for big business. Uh, the Philippines is the world's biggest supplier of nickel ore and a major source of copper. And, and this woman thought that too. Yeah, right. Pull your head out of your ass, you clueless bitch. Okay, let's go over to Myanmar. Myanmar coal plant growth could kill 200 80,000 people. Well, there you go. There's, there's some good news from the coal mining sector. Myanmar's plans to grow the country's desperately needed, desperately needed, but polluting coal-fired power plants could kill more than a quarter of a million people in Myanmar in the coming decades, environmentalists said. Thursday. The country's air is among the dirtiest in the world already, and pollution is only expected to worsen as the economy opens up. As as a part of opening up the economy, Myanmar plans to expand its current network of two coal-fired power plants to ten. There you go. This is how Myanmar is honoring the Paris Climate Agreement. Let's go over to Iran. Don't hear much about Iran and coal. Iran coal mine explosion kills 35 miners. Well, we finally, this is two pieces of good news from the coal mining sector. Now, okay, let's go over there to those uh, cobalt miners. I've been talking about this over there in Sub-Saharan Africa and the, and the Democratic Republic of Congo miners upset at U.S. conflict mineral rules. You know, that uh, Barack Obama, uh, you know, trying to, uh, well, pretend like he was doing a goddamn thing uh, about all of these, this child slave labor and all of this shit and all of these dead gorillas and wars and everything going on over there while all of these goddamn clueless little greeny and limp dick environmentalists driving around in their fucking electric cars acting like they're saving a goddamn planet and so uh, so you know Barack Obama uh, sitting there throwing some shit on the wall and then uh, but don't worry uh, Donald Trump uh, is going to take care of all that and child slavery and warfare and all of that uh, environmental destruction. The, the miners don't need to be sorry for long. Donald Trump to the rescue. Okay, from sub-Saharan Africa, let's get back to our own country. Let's go down to the state of Florida. I wish you could see this photo. Wildlife rich lagoon heavily polluted and threatened by building boom. The most biologically diverse waterway in America is seriously ill. The Indian River Lagoon is repeatedly being choked by oxygen robbing algae, it's surfing increasingly dotted with thousands of dead fish, manatees, birds, and other creatures. And a study by the Associated Press discovered the problem is getting worse. The, culp the culprits 
farm runoff and an influx of people. D, D, D. How many times do we say the culprits are an influx of people? An acid reflux of people. Uh, but of course, the Indian River Lagoon will be under water in a few years, so you know. Anyway, let's go from Florida to the Pacific Ocean. Researchers seek better ways to farm popular Pacific Ocean fish. And this is just the latest Associated Press story cheering on these goddamn fish farms. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe Donald Trump will put an end to this bullshit. Come on, Donald, you can do it. It is part, all of these fish farms they, they just look at one in particular, one of these goddamn planet-eating things, is part of a larger effort by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to support marine aquaculture as a solution to feed a growing demand worldwide for seafood. People are consuming more fish than ever. Do you think so? But some critics worry large-scale farms could harm wild fish stocks and ocean health. Oh, Jesus. Okay. As long as we're talking about uh, overfishing and all that, what is the United Nations? You know, it, it is the United Nations and their, and their fucking sustainable development goals are, are the ones behind these goddamn fish farms. Let's make no mistake uh, who's behind these fucking fish farms. It's the goddamn United Nations, their sustainable development goals trying to feed... Uh, about uh, nine and a half billion people who should never have been born. So what is the UN doing to mark the first World Tuna Day? The United Nations marked the first World Tuna Day on Tuesday with calls to conserve one of the globe's most popular fish to be caught and eaten. Yep, yep, yep. Two-thirds of the tuna found in restaurants and supermarkets around the world comes from the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and with the decline in the health of the oceans, the fish stocks, including ton tuna, face growing threats and an uncertain future. UN spokesman Stefan Dujaric called the tuna trade, quote, a significant contributor to the global economy. Okay, let's go from dead tuna fish just to any, uh, any animal with ears. Noise pollution risks animals' survival in the wild. Human noise. Hmm. Human noise is polluting more than one half of natural areas protected in the United States to such an extent that the noise could interfere with animals' ability to hunt and survive, researchers said Thursday. Uh, researchers found that background noise from
from humans exceeded three decibels in 63% of protected areas and 21% of areas background noise was 10 decibels higher than it would be without the influence of humans. Another way to look at it is that human cause noise has reduced the area where natural sounds can be heard between 50 and 90 percent depending on which protected natural area you choose to take your fucking drone, you choose to take your ORV, you choose to take your fucking dirt bike, you choose to take your fucking radio, your fucking barking dog, which is a human noise. Okay, let's go over to Fukushima. Wildfire in Fukushima sparks fears of spread spreading radiation. This is International Business Times, guys. This is not Alex Jones. International Business Times. A wildfire broke out over the weekend in a portion of Japan's Fukushima prefecture, sparking concerns that the blaze might spread air airborne radiation. The fire started where radiation has remained high enough since the 2011 disaster for officials <laughs> to continue declaring it a, quote, difficult to return zone. A difficult to return zone. And speaking of difficult to return, now guys, I don't know how much of this has to do with the global industrial economy, but have you seen pictures of this goddamn sandstorm over there in China in the past few days? As sandstorm blankets huge area of China in dusty pollution. A sandstorm blown by gusting winds enveloped a huge area of central and northern China on Thursday in thick pollution hazardous to people venturing outdoors. Tens of millions of residents across eight provinces and in Beijing were told to use masks or scarves when outside to protect their eyes and lungs. Jesus. Okay. Just three more real quick ones. You can decide. I just thought this one was humorous. Have you uh, heard about this, this big reggae festival that went belly up? The fire festival. After the fire festival, millennials still want to live like millionaires on the cheap. Yes, there you go. This is what our what our millennials were up to. Uh, the fire festival, uh, you know, which went all belly up, cost between a, a ticket to this reggae festival between fifteen hundred dollars and two hundred fifty thousand dollars two hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy a ticket to a fucking reggae festival these are the clueless fucking morons that we are leaving this planet to uh let's see then they 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 they, they just go through a lot of this stuff just one more here is some app uh, with a $250 per year subscription for this app that offers, quote, members only experience and exclusive benefits, including concerts, restaurant tastings, and art gallery previews. This, this shit goes on and on. Two more. Uh... Let's go back to Sub-Saharan Africa 
where we see Africa's inequality, Africa's inequality stifles growth. Africa is experiencing higher levels of poverty than previously thought because decades of economic growth have only benefited a small wealthy elite. And I'm going to pick up both buttons and uh, at this point. Uh, that is one reason that Africa has experienced higher levels of poverty than previously thought, but obviously you are never going to see the word overpopulation. And we're going to end, you know, where does this rhino horn shit stop? You know, all of these rhinos being gunned down. Now they're gunning down rhinos in zoos. And here we have rhino horns stolen from University of Vermont. Uh, I mean, the rhino was already dead. A black rhinoceros horn stolen from a locked room at the University of Vermont is likely destined for the international black market. Do you think so? The, uh, the rhino horn had been hanging for decades in Torrey Hall and then it has now disappeared. Yes. Anyway, we're going to wrap up right there because, uh, let's see, with this quote from one of these rhino huggers, quote, We have this whole illegal trade that is leading to the demise of this species because of this ridiculous idea that these things have value as an aphrodisiac, as we obliterate rhinos off the face of the earth to give these Chinese guys, get their little peckers hard. So they think they need to stick their little peckers in, in a fucking, uh, in a fucking, uh, what? Uh, one of these rock crushers at some, uh, one of these goddamn mines. Anyway, Guys, I'm going to wrap up uh, this week's economic meltdown roundup rant. And me and little dog, we need to go to bed because we got a 12-hour ride tomorrow to get the fuck out of South Austin, Texas and back to East Mumblefuck, New Mexico. So probably no rants tomorrow, but I will be back on track. I will get back on track on Wednesday with my climate melt, climate change meltdown roundup rant. Bye guys.